Recording in progress. So, so before I introduce James, I'm going to give some copy instructions. Okay. <laughs> so no longer do we need to collect our coffee cups midway. Okay, just please leave them on the table. Just leave them on the table, and the kitchen staff will. Yeah, the kitchen volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll probably open that door and just come and collect the money so it's safe. And then we'll take care of everything after. Oh, nice. Everybody leaves, we'll take care of everything. So that just there's not going to be all that disruption of collecting the cups. Got it? Good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. This is the first. We have more in here than we have out there. Yay. and we have some slides, but I just, just be comfortable where you're at. I, uh, I don't want this to be so much of a lecture as more of a, of a conversation. Um, and so at your table, there's a couple of resources. One is from your community on uh, preparing for Christian funeral services, which obviously you could take home. I looked through, through that. It's very thorough. And the other piece is this emotion sheet um, for you to reference as part of our conversation today. So I wanted to introduce those who have some pens and some sticky notes and taking notes. Um, I just want this to be conversational, so I have a lot to say, and uh, I'm going to try to take about 8,000 years of funeral service ritual and compress it into 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, but no, let's, let's just chat a bit about what this is. Um, there's some learning styles in, um, I just like to teach a lot, I educate a lot, but there's a learning style that I want you to think about. One is called, tell me I will forget, show me I will remember, and if it involved me, I will understand. And the other piece that I don't have on here is the wisdom of the group. You have so much wisdom that we all learn from the wisdom of the group. So my role is just to facilitate the conversation today, because you have much to say as well. And that's what I want this to be about. So your questions at any time, just raise your hand and speak up or share something that strikes you in the moment, please. Uh, end of life planning is kind of what our topic is today. And I want to come at it from three different ways. Grief, hospice, which I spent a lot of years in, and then a funeral, or what I like to call today a celebration of life. That's really what we're doing. So we're kind of transitioning from maybe this older way of thinking about the end of life to, oh my gosh, a funeral, to whatever it is, let's celebrate the life. However long that is, we celebrate the life. So that's kind of the terminology that I use when I celebrate a life of a, of a loved one. Um, and I like to come at this from the spirituality lens, the lens of spirituality of grief. Let's not be afraid of grief. Grief is a gift. We need to grieve all of our losses. Death is a big one. But all of our losses, relationships, homes, jobs, pets, we need to grieve. It's a beautiful gift to be able to do that. And especially for us guys, don't be afraid of tears. Tears help us express what we don't have the words for. Tears express what we don't have the words for. Can you believe the gift that that is? Because how do we put words around something like the end of life? We don't have the words for it, so what we do is we emote. And that brings me to this sheet. I'd like you to just take a look at this. And as we just started our conversation, how do you feel about coming to the end of your life? How do you feel about 
talking about death? Anyone? Confused. 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 Okay, that's why we're here today. <laughs> good, good, good word. Anyone else? How do you feel about this topic, or how do you feel about knowing that we're all going to die? Yes. Well, kind of sad. Sad. Okay. Things that you know you're not going to be able to accomplish that you still want to do or see. Yeah. Time is short. Time is short. Sad. That's on the list. That's appropriate. Yeah. Not me right now, but I witnessed another just angry. 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 Good, good emotion. You know, a lot of us are brought up with, oh, you shouldn't. Don't be angry. Yeah, don't be angry. I say, why not? God can handle that. Right? We have problems with it, but there's a way to do that well. Yes, ma'am, please. Yeah, when I hear about that, sometimes it scares me, and sometimes I think I feel happy sometimes. Yes. Sometimes it scares you, and sometimes I feel happy. This changes every day, doesn't it? Even every hour. Every hour. And the, the biggest thing I can say about feelings, about emotions, they're all valid. All feelings and emotions are valid. Some of us have grown up with, oh, don't feel that way. You shouldn't feel that way. You can't, you can't feel that way. I think that's old language. And I'm here to say whatever you feel, whatever emotion you have at any time is valid. We need to validate that. One of the best things I learned in spiritual direction training was when someone's crying, you ask the question, tell me where the tears are coming from. Is that ever beautiful? As opposed to what we used to say, oh, don't cry. Don't cry. Don't cry. And now you want to say, why not? See how we can change the way we view the end of life? Well, they said there is a better place. Yes. Yes. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Where are they? <laughs> so just to be cautious of what we say, and you don't have to say anything. You know, it's a bit awkward still. It's awkward. What do I say? I can't go to the funeral because what do I say? Well, 80% of it is showing up. The fact you came says volumes. And all you have to do is go up and say, I'm here. Here I am. Shake a hand, give a hug, and just say, I'm here for you. That's it. And let the rest just unfold. Because God is present in all of that ritual. So we don't have to fix or cure or change. Just showing up is so beautiful, like you did today. We fill in the room. <laughs> beautiful. So put this on the fridge. <laughs> the other thing is works great with children. When they come home, or they come, your grandkids or children come home from school, don't ask, don't ask them, did you have a good day? That's a yes or no question, right? Did you have to say, how do you feel about your day today? And they go, oh my God, I'm, I'm just elated, Grandma. Or I'm just I'm confused. Or I bet you say, tell me more about that. Right? If they say, I am just envious. <laughs> Little, you know, five year old, just envious. Tell me about that. So, <laughs> no, but this is just a really cool, simple, but okay. So, it helps us get in touch with ourselves and our feelings, and they're all valid. They're all really valid. This is a reading, and I, I know you can't see this, and I can actually, Gene, give uh, this, you can copy these slides for people and, oh, sure. you know, give them. Uh, this is Ecclesiastes 3, and you know this reading, there's a, there's a time for things. There's a time, a time to sow, and a time, a time for birth, another for death, a time to plant, a time to reap. This is just so beautiful for me. It's the reading I always use when I celebrate a life, when I lead a celebration of life. Because you know why it says to me, there's just a time for things. There's a time to be sad. There's a time to be angry. There's a time to be confused. There's a time to be joyful. It's the way it is. And the Greek word... For God's time is. Oh gosh, <laughs> I know. Pat and I go back way to graduate school. 
Kairos. That, that, thank you. The Greek <laughs> word is Kairos, meaning God's time. Kairos. Yeah. We operate in Kronos. Us humans have invented clocks and calendars. They're always doing this, right? You have to, to try to manage and control time. God doesn't care about clocks and calendars. God operates in God's time. And so when God wants to see us face to face, it's going to happen. It's God's time. It's Kairos. When we want to see God face to face, it will happen. And that's what this reading is. There's just a time for things, and it's so beautiful. There's just a time. And so be in that moment and be in that time, whether it's joy or misery or what it is, because it's temporary. Grief is spiritual. It transcends time and place. You know, we need to grieve, and it's such a beautiful emotion. I just can't say enough about it. Don't be afraid of it. It's the deepest connection to what is real. I want to feel things. A lot of us, oh, I, don't, I want to avoid it. I don't want to feel it. I want to feel it. The only way to go through our grief and our pain is to go through our grief and our pain. You can't go around it. Avoiding it and not talking about it doesn't make anything go away. So we have to enter into that experience at the end of life. It's necessary. It's appropriate. Tears are necessary. They're normal. It's appropriate. I did 12 and a half years in hospice. I had people die in front of me all the time. I had family sitting with me. My job was to help people cry. And I'd go home on Fridays and help myself just weep from carrying the stories and carrying all that. Oh, my Friday was just it was inspiring and exhausting. I just felt my, and I'd put some movies on or some songs, and I would just, just bawl and go, oh, man, I needed that. How many of us haven't said, boy, I just need a good cry, right? And what happens after? I just feel wonderful. So help yourself grieve. That's the reason we have funeral liturgies and funeral services, ritualization. We ritualize something, and that's the other thing about ritual that helps us express we don't have the words for. We've been having funerals. There's archaeology. 130,000 years ago, the Neanderthals were burying people in graves with their tools. So they must have had some kind of funeral, liturgy, ritual. We've been doing it for thousands and thousands of years. And we still do it. And we'll do it for thousands and thousands of years. Ritual is so important to what we do. Sometimes even our morning ritual, right? We have our morning ritual, okay? Or our morning routine. They're a little different. But ritual includes symbols. At the end of life, you go to a service, you have flowers, you have fire and light, you have music, you have gestures, you have singing, you have words, you have hugs and handshakes, and that's ritual. And urns and caskets, and wow, we've been at this one. That's beautiful ritual. That's what we do. So it's appropriate, and it's healing. Talking about the end of life, sharing in the end of life experience is very healing. Just talking about it. I believe this. I believe we all want to talk about our death, but we don't know how to start the conversation. It's my job. That's what I do. And I've just found this place to be in helping people do that. And you can ask people open-ended questions to say, like I do, how do you feel about Dad coming to the end of his life. And they just create that space. A lot of times we don't like silence, chat, chatty, chatty, chat, and just say, how do you feel about that? Tell me about your feeling right now about the end of your life. And just be with that. It's beautiful. It's all beautiful. So we have end of life planning, we have visitations. That ritual of gathering. We've been gathering and gathering for thousands of years. And food always draws everybody, right? Right? That central Minnesota funeral hot dish? Nobody does it better than us. <laughs> we want to get people to come to a funeral. They don't come for the visit. They come for the food. Right? <laughs> Those ham buns. Oh. <laughs> right? See? It's a ritual. All of that is such a, 
it's such a ritual, and, and that's just the world I live in. But anyway, uh, and then the cemetery, you know, whatever that is, burying people and that ritual, it, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's, it goes on and on. Um, so gatherings and all that is really important. Ritual is so important. It's a spiritual thing. Grief is a relationship with ourselves and our deepest feelings. Getting in touch with our feelings, especially for us men, I've learned, you know, a lot of us are in our head, especially guys are wired to be fixers and let's logic. And the, the beautiful women are all about the heart and the emotions. And the best place to be is be right in the middle. I use my head and my heart to figure out where I'm at. That's the best of both things. If you can be totally in balance and your authentic self, we use our head and our heart. That's where we reside. That's where we are. It's beautiful. It's a relationship. Grief is a relationship. No boundaries, lots of feelings and emotions. It can be overwhelming, and that's okay. You know, it's okay to say, you know what, I just need to go home and be by myself and just be with this, and that's healthy. What is unhealthy is if that goes on for days and days and days. But it's okay to say, you know what, I'm good. I just need to go home and lay on the couch and weep. That's healthy. That's healthy to do that. It might be complicated, um, but it is normal and it's natural and it's expected. We all expect people to grieve, so let's be in that journey together. 2,000 years ago, in Palestine, the Jewish preacher, we all know who he was and is, I don't think he said, guys, this is going to be easy. <laughs> he didn't say that. What he did say was, you won't do it alone. The beauty and the beginning of the Christian tradition. You won't do it alone. And your faith community here and all of us, it's all, we're all not alone, ever alone. We may think we are, but it's a phone call and a cup of coffee and I'm coming over. Right? That's the beauty of the Christian tradition over 2,000 years old. It's not easy, but we're not doing it alone. So I'd ask what sustains you today? what gets you to where you can be through your spirituality of grief, all of the deaths you've experienced death with loved ones, there'll be more. Um, we all have uh, soon, uh, not soon, but someday our own. We don't know. And that's kind of why I came, is to have us think about what are you going to think about, how are you going to plan your own celebration of life? And the reason that we do that is a couple of good reasons. One is you get to express what you want. You get to say, I want these three songs, and I want hot beach sandwiches for lunch, <laughs> and the funeral hot dish, and then I want this, and I want this, and I want this. You get to say that. And some of us avoid all of that and say, I'll just leave it to the kid. The kids will decide. And then I'm the guy who deals with the kids and says, what did mom want? And eight kids are sitting around going, I don't know what she wanted. <laughs> but I got to work with that. So you guys take care of it, okay? So we don't have to. But it does happen, and we realize that's a normal too. And we do that with a lot of families. But the best of everything is that you get to spell it out and say, this is what I want. This is what I like. This is what I desire. My parents, my mom was a, a nurse, and when they were retired in their senior years, they called us together at a family meal, and my mom said, your father and I have decided this is what we're going to do. And he handed the paper up. Thanks, mom. It's all done. Beautiful, right? And then we just got about living and celebrating lives and moving on. But it was, geez, they, had, they did it for us. And involved us and said, what do you think? And of course, we said, mom, thanks. It's, it's your funeral. It's your celebration. You get to do what you want. Because sometimes families will say, well, I want Amazing Grace. The other one says, well, I want Johnny Cash. And well, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? I want Stairway to Heaven. What do you want? That's fine. Except I come back and what did mom want? Oh, yeah, it's about mom. That's right. It's about mom. So all of that is kind of appropriate. We work through it. But the beauty is you get to specify all of that. So I've talked a lot for a while. I want to see any questions rising to the surface? Anything you want to share, offer? Well, you mentioned Christian spiritual service. Do you do, you do un-Christian, non-denominational? Yes. Yeah. I mean, we accommodate all families, of course. You know, and just in our area, by, you know, by and large, most of our services, our celebrations of life, are based in the main Christian tradition. 
Um, lots of other, you know, cultures are a little more clannish than we are, and they take care of their own. So, you know, we will accommodate that, but a lot of folks are, are more private depending on their culture and take care of their own loved ones and, and we just support that. But, well, but KP is KP. Well, I had that experience. Thanks for bringing it up. So, um, in my hospice work, as you know, we travel around and see people wherever they are. And, and one fellow was in his own home and I came in just to do an assessment and see, you know, to be helpful. I mean, I don't have to do anything other than be helpful. A companion but provided spiritual care, spiritual counselor. And the, the wife came up to me and she said, oh, James, you know, he's not religious. He doesn't want to talk about God. I said, that's okay, guy. I, I got that. I got it. I got it. So I visited with this man in his hospital bed in his own room at his cabin in the woods. It was beautiful. And I got to know him a little bit. And I find with people, he asked, well, what's meaningful to you? I said, Bill, what do you, where do you find meaning? I didn't say, how come you're not being like this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you don't believe in God, you know? No, I said, tell me, tell me. It's always a great way to open a conversation. But they tell me. Bill, tell me, where do you find deep meaning? Well, and I say, could see the environment. He's got these big windows, his bed's right there. He's in the woods. Nature was his, his God. And so I approached that a little bit and just kind of checked with them. And then I went home and I started thinking, I thought, what, what do I, how can I help, help Bill be on this journey? How can I companion him? And it came to me, did a little research. I went back and I said, you know, Bill, I said, I got a thought for you. Can I share a thought? Well, sure. I said, you know, just think that our, the molecules in our body are the same molecules that make up all the planets. And he went, wow. <laughs> And all is right with the world. I, I, you know, I don't have the authority to tell anybody what they should believe, and I don't have the authority to tell anybody anything. My style and what I've learned that's helpful is to be a companion on their journey. So saying to them, what what brings you deep meaning? What brings you deep? What, tell me about your spirituality. What what is you know, just that conversation? Unbelievable work, which is gorgeous. So, um, again, I can accommodate all styles. I'm just so open. Like it doesn't matter to me what you believe. What matters to me is what you believe, you know, not what I should tell you. So, therein lies, I, you know, the universal creator is present at all times. And so, how do we be in relationship with that? Beautiful, great. Thank you for the question. So. Um, other questions, anything, any concerns? I guess one, one thing I'd like to ask as I did my patients in the hospice and say, what's your biggest concern about this journey? What's your biggest fear about coming to the end of your life? I would say that my family is provided for. That is the number one answer, Susan. When I would ask my patients what their biggest fear is, is my family going to be okay? Number one answer. No one ever. I in 12 and a half years, I did a little math, rude, rude math. I made 10,000 visits. I visited patients 10,000, and no one ever said, oh, "Okay, there was maybe one." <laughs> if they're afraid of dying, but after two minutes, they weren't afraid of dying. It's almost like they're supposed to say that. No one's ever afraid of dying. At least the ones I talked to. You know, when your body doesn't feel good and you're 97 or 107 years old, I'm done. This is true, 107. This girl is 107 I work with. Went to high school on horseback in South Rapids. And she was right there, eating popcorn and drinking water, going, I don't know why I'm still here. <laughs> Seriously, they all say that. They all say that. I can't believe I'm here. Why am I not? Why am I not gone? <laughs> Beautiful, right? Hollywood hasn't helped us, guys. <laughs> Hollywood. There's Hollywood, and then there's reality. Nothing wrong with Hollywood for entertainment's sake, but this is real. And all of the experiences that I've had with families in the end of life, the word is awesomeness. It's the most spiritual thing you'll ever witness in your life. So we can choose joy, we can choose beauty, 
or you can choose misery and grimness and morbidity. Oh my God. Oh, well, this, see, grief and sadness is different. Time to be sad, time to be joyful. Tears of sadness and tears of joy. You can cry at funerals, you can laugh at funerals. We're laughing through our tears and crying in the laughter. It's all okay. Right? There's no right way to do this. Got to do it the right way. What's the right way? It's the way for you. Let me ask a question. Please. You know, I have had people die from me. Close, close people. Mm -hmm. From the time I know myself, people they die from me. I never knew my mom because she died in childbirth. So okay. I never knew her. My father read me. He got married. He got my But uh, my father was old. He was like, not that old, but old. He was like 88 years old before he died. But the way he died, he died right in the two hands of mine, and we were talking. Mm. And the last word, he said first to me, he said, to see you, I said, yeah, yeah. He said, thank you for all you have done for me. God will bless you. So I said, okay. He said, your children will be blessed the way you took care of me. And I was answering fast. He said, these words will come to pass. And I said, okay, Dre. And the last word he said, he said, wait, my breath got in shot. And then he just looked up like this, and he did. Yeah. And I thought he was sleeping, yeah. but I know he was dead. So then we the king checking everything he had died. But within that moment, I couldn't cry. I was just like, I wasn't sure whether you were there, but you know, we'll come back. But I said this to say, after we buried him, I cried and mourned for my father, and it wouldn't go away. You know, it just wouldn't go away. Mm -hmm. But as time went by, years it went. Yeah. Now in 2020, 2021, my older son, died from the COVID, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I couldn't get close to him, you know, but I saw him, and I told him, I didn't know he was dying, the only thing I said to him, I said, you are a tough guy, you will make it, you will get out of the hospital, but within an hour, he died, and then that was, that was, a uh, uh, in July, he died. My brother, who who I'm older than, he died in July. My son died. No, my, my brother died in June. My son died in July. The only sister in Virginia, she died in August, and all of them died like week, two weeks, two weeks in between. So. When my son died, my brother died, it didn't really, you know, I cried and mourned for him and stuff. But it was only two weeks in between before my son died. And there were only two weeks between before my sister died. So it would be three people. I didn't know who I was crying for. Right. I didn't know who I was mourning for. Right. But the more hype for one, it was my son. Yeah. But then it was just too much for me. I didn't know how to. You know, process. Yeah, mm -hmm. all my kids, you know, that their uncle, their auntie, their brother, oh. we all moved together. But yeah. <clears throat> something about it, I didn't worry. I didn't, you know, grieve myself to death. And I just said, Lord, well, you gave him to me, you took me away. So my daughter they sent me to text it to one of my family members there to just, you know, to have some time off. So I went to this party and then one of my cousins were telling, introduced me and said, and the other lady turned around and said, wow, you have all these dead people and you come to a party? <laughs> I said, of course, you want me to die with it? Yes. <laughs> yes. I said, I have to get out. Yep. So they, they wouldn't want me sitting in the dark, right. you know, crying myself to death. Right. So from that, you know, yeah. it's been a 
there for two years now since I had all those people pass and but I still not feel you know down. Right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Cecilia. So I wonder yeah. why like Jesus like that when people die. Oh well. First, that, that's a lot of death and a lot of grief for you in a short time, and you did it well. Um, you helped your dad die. You helped your father die. That's a blessing that we can do that. That is a lot of what my work is. You know, help people die. When they're ready, you help them die. It's not sick, it's not morbid, but you, you were there and present. And all of your losses, you're talking about it, you're grieving it, it takes time. Time is a good healer. I still cry yeah. about my mom and dad. You know, I'll watch a movie or a thought will come over me, and it's just, I am such a sensitive male that I'm just weeping and blowing snot bubbles. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just how it is. And I've accepted that. So that's the gift of entering into that journey. And then to party at the same time is, it's okay. You can't mourn forever. You will grieve forever. The load gets lighter as time goes on. And no one gave up on your family. Uh, no one gives up on people, but we move toward letting go. And that's a beautiful <coughs> gift. If you're like this and holding on to that, you can't heal. But once you practice letting go, it's beautiful. It's the beauty you know, of letting go. Once in a while, you know, you feed that sadness. You feed that person you were alone, and you just find yourself in tears. Right. Yeah. That, and then you can have joy, too. That's the beauty of that. So thank you for that. Beautiful words. You, yes. you, you talked about what a blessing it is to give the you know, parents talk to the kids and say, this is what we want. Because I've read articles where the mother will start to say, this is what I want, and the daughter says, I, 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 I can't handle it, don't talk yeah. about it. Yeah. So, well, again, that that's um, it's a little bit of a skill to gently do that. I mean, uh, and that's kind of where we come in is, is we do help that process, and it gets us back to that's the whole idea of pre-planning. Yeah. Bring your families in to, to see us, and then you can have that conversation with us. And that can be a long time, and it's okay. It's two or three hours to do pre-arrangements, we call it. And you sit down and say, okay, well, what do you want to talk about? And, and then, you know, we facilitate that. So you have a professional there that can help that. Um, we just recommend that, as opposed to, again, not talking about it. And nobody feels good about that. Mom wants to talk about it with her adult child, and they don't want to talk about it, so mom, well, they can die. Yeah, you know, right. this doesn't feel good. Right. Karen, did you? Well, what you tend to do is you write it down. Right. And that's yeah. what I've done and handed it to my children. Yeah. Even when they don't want to talk about it, when they're ready to read it. So. Very good. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's, you know, especially, you know, writing it down is so helpful because then no one has to guess or remember what mom wants, so Karen's written it down, and you think, like, here you go, kids. What's this? This is my celebration of life. When my mom, my mom, I'm the only one of her children that she told me what she wanted. And when she died, I told all my brothers and sisters, and they had no clue. But, but you know, maybe that's a, a you know, pick one kid that yep. is open to hear. Yep. Whatever works in that family yeah. dynamic. Usually it's the oldest one, but sometimes the oldest one doesn't want to do it, so pick one. You know, you just you start the conversation. And, right. And somebody's got to start it. Yep. And it might as well be you. And say, hey guys, let's come on over for dinner, and guess what we're gonna talk about at the end of my life? <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> ah, the Wilder playing tonight? Are you kidding? I gotta watch the game. You know, whatever. And, and you know, and you can laugh about it. Like we're doing. You can laugh about it. You can cry. Linda and I are hospice volunteers at the VA. Wonderful. And oftentimes, when I'm sitting with a gentleman, or even with our own family members, and they're just lingering and lingering. And one time I left one of our patients, and I thought, he's not going to be here in the morning. And he lived for a couple more weeks, and I always, I always pray, um, what is his mission or her mission on earth yet? Why aren't you taking him or her yet? Yeah, yeah. Which is a big, a, a big deal. It is a big deal, and you know what's interesting about that. What my experience has been in hospice is um, a couple things. They're waiting to see someone, so I always ask the family, "Has everyone been here? Who hasn't come to see Uncle Bill or Mom or Dad?" And once in a while, yeah, you know, the son in Seattle doesn't want to be here. 
or he's on his way, but they always wait for some that last person to come. Yep. That's very common. Yep. Um, also, this is really interesting. They don't want to die in front of family. Right. right. And so in our area, I mean, I've gone into a room and there's been 13 German Catholic kids in that room for three days, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, waiting. Yeah. As soon as I come in, I say, guys, you know what? You need to go home and get some sleep and take a shower <laughs> and get some rest, and then you can come back and an hour later after they leave, they die. Right, right, right. Unbelievable how much that happens. Yeah, yeah. It's just the way it is. And so like, you're giving people permission. You've been here, it's okay, mom's gonna be fine. She wants you to live your life, you need to leave. And I tell them right out, I said, don't be surprised when you leave that she dies and it's within a couple of hours. It's amazing what happens. Um. I'm an only child, and so my parents were older, and my dad had had a stroke, and he would uh, get pneumonia. They kind of, kind of, you know, get come back, but he kept getting worse and worse. And so uh, they lived in Austin, and I would get these calls, you know, Dad, your dad's not doing well. You know, you better come home. So it was one day, then they called me. I said, Well, do you think I can? Can I? Uh, leave after work, and they said, "No, you better come home now." It's a two-hour drive. So I went home, and I went in there, and I was, and my uncle Ernie was in there with Dad, and Dad was sleeping. I think maybe a coma. I was talking to my <coughs> uncle Ernie. We were chatting, and the nurse out in the hall came, and she said, "And I went out there, and she said, what are you doing?'" And I said, "What do you mean?" And she said. Your dad is waiting for you to tell him it's okay to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's it, it gone. I'm, I'm just like, I, I know what she's asking me to do, and I hope I can do it. Very good. That's, that's good. Yeah, very so good. I went in there, and I sat down, yeah. and my uncle Ernie was a shade. He was white. And I told dad, I said, you know, I love you very much. Best dad ever. It's okay to go. I'll take care of mom. We're going to be fine. <coughs> I kind of choked that out. Not as good as I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> he was gone. Yeah. He was gone in five minutes. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. Like yeah. That. And, and, and yeah. you got to do that. I mean, that's called giving them permission yeah. to die. Yeah. 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 And it's exactly what you needed to do. And good for you because that's what we all need to hear. Well, yes. I'm sure you probably, you know, you probably get the science to that, you know, that worker there. I mean, I don't know how she knew that, but she seemed to know it, that yep. there was yeah. this time to so that. Yeah. Well, we've had experience with it. That's, I mean, we, you know, in our healthcare and hospice and the end of life, we've been doing this, so we know what to do. And we recognize the signs for that. And that's a good coaching from the nurse to do that. And I've done yeah. the same. Let's you know, come out by her all the bed. Come on, guys. Come up here. And, Get around and you know it's okay, Dad. You can go. We're gonna be fine. And that's all. All that ritual is so powerful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. You know, and, and sometimes they, we know that they're dying, and they know that they're dying, but they do need that permission to do yes. it. With my mom, I told her, I said, just, just let go, mom. Yeah. And she goes, let go of what? <laughs> let go <of> my hand. <laughs> And the nurses, when they called us the next morning, they said she had her most peaceful night. Yeah. She had been so yeah. restless. And we just gave her that permission. Yes. It's okay. It's huge. So, yes. Yes. I didn't yes. say so. I'm thinking she did it. Yeah, but my husband passed away. Uh, and uh, he was at home. And, and uh, kids came home, and each one you know, went in and see him. And then it was, I could tell, you know, being a nurse and his breathing was and what was going on, you know, but uh, I told him, you know, one of the things that he's really, really struggling and I just told him that we loved him very much and that it was okay. We would be just fine. We'd be okay. And it was all time to go home to God. Yeah. You know, Giving you permission. It's yeah. beautiful. And, so, and, you know, when you think about what you're really doing is you're ministering. You're ministering. That's just beautiful. You're empowered to do that. You don't have to wait for the pastor to come or the chaplain to come or someone of authority. You're all authorized 
to give people permission to die. That is powerful. That is beautiful what you're sharing. I, another little story, um, there was a, I came into a room and there's a, a, an elderly gal, you know, at the end of her life and she was in bed and I look over and there's two adult children way over in the corner, you know, and it's kind of common, you know, so I don't know what to do. So of course I walk in, hi guys, uh, come on up, let's, let's talk to mom. So we come up and my ritual is to get them involved and to be processing this and be in the ritual. So I said, come on up, let's just talk to mom and we get, you know. So I just, in my way, kind of just offering a few words of reflection. And I said, you know, Mildred, it's okay. You know, you can go see your God whenever you're ready to do that. And she knows that, but I'm doing it for the children, you know, so they can hear this and start to emote a little bit. It's okay to see your God whenever you're ready. You can just go and everybody's going to be okay and all is going to be fine. And she goes, shut up! <laughs> service at our funeral home and they came up to me and he said it's just it was so great James it's just what mom needed because you know, she died a few days later you know and so I mean but see it's all normal and they said it's so great she needed that and you felt just do that we had that little ritual I love it again. I, I'm being helpful right <laughs> shut up <laughs> one other story with my mom she was on hospice and I thought I'd be helpful so I'm sitting on her bed you know with mom oh gosh I'm right here for you, and she's this retired nurse and had no problem with end of life. She was so open, and, and, uh, and so I'm saying, Mom, you know, and so I, you know, said, Mom, let's see the Our Father, and we did that, and I was kind of pouring it on a little bit, and I, as soon as I got done saying some words, she goes, you're putting it on a little thick, aren't you? <laughs> I had no help here. I have no help. I can't be helpful. So the, this little lesson is that I, all the people I... Everyone knows they're dying. Most people, you know, outside of a tragic accident or something like that, that's a different kind of grief. But a natural end of life, everyone knows they're dying. And you can talk about it. You can talk about that. They want to talk about it. It's usually the family that's right, you know, kind of doesn't want that. But we all can help that happen. Gee, I'm being sensitive to our time here. So, you know, I want to not go over and you folks have been here attentive. Okay. 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 So, you know, do we need a little stretch break? Do we want to continue? Or are we done? Or do you need to get home? Or what do you want to do? I mean, it's open to Can we just stay for questions or something? Yeah, we can have some questions, Pat, or anything else. Just share the conversation. I, I want to say this. I, I have these here. This is a, a little bit of an end of, uh, uh, end of life planning guide in paper. And you can take these and take it home and just look it over. If you'd like to write things out on paper, we have these for you. Otherwise, on our website, just like on Amazon, you can plan your own funeral online. <laughs> we're, at, we're, you know, we're in the know, we're in the, on the grid. Um, and you can do that. There's a form, you fill out the blanks, you hit submit, it comes to us. We call you, you come in and we visit. And talk about what you want. I mean, that's, and, and there's so many options today. Everything from the traditional, we still have the horse-drawn carriage from the 1880s. If you want to go down Division Street and that thing, we can get <laughs> two ponies, black ponies, and you just and we do actually have that. Um, it's available. Okay. Anything from the very traditional to the very contemporary, we can accommodate all that. Catered lunches, catered meals, visitations, cremation urns, caskets. We don't do specials on caskets. You know, it's not like you know, come on in, it's ten percent off. <laughs> we don't do that. Uh, I think we could. Yeah, special in caskets. But, uh, Linda. Um, one of the things that you've been realizing here at Tolman, um, it's a whole different ballgame when somebody has arranged their cremation uh, not using a funeral home. And so the needs are greater put on the church to help them with the ushers, help them with the planning. Yes. And so one of the things we're beginning to look at here at Tolman is to get a couple of volunteers. Um, to be those funeral coordinators. We already have an organization like that. Yes. Do we hear this? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I need to know this. And the statement in here is it's a little confusing under the uh, memorial service.
was referring to Boston, the home of Tuckerman, it's not entirely accurate what the volunteer group will do. There are a couple of coordinators. Okay. Uh, Carol McCall, myself, uh, okay. Debbie Grabowski, and Kay, uh, Kay, where are you? Kay, Kay, Kay. 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 Ooh, mostly oh, and in charge. Okay. There haven't been a lot of them. Okay. But we're trying to train more and more of the congregation. We have volunteers <coughs> to be ushers and helpers with us. Okay. But then let's talk so I can get Very this because we've been putting yeah. together I, um, uh, sheets that says who does what here at Atomic so yeah. that people know who I have that. a packet that I can share with you. Perfect. Thank Beautiful. You. That raise a point about and I'll just say that uh, thanks for coming back. Thank yeah, thank you. We're, right. we're attending a gathering for my mother's house, which will be 95. Oh, oh. oh. Party. Party. Celebrate your life, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just want to say uh, that cremation is, is kind of the trend, and for a lot of reasons. Uh, I'll just mention a couple. One is very convenient because uh, then you have a lot of time. A lot of time, you know, families are spread out today all over the world, not like it used to be, where everyone was kind of in the same place. So when someone is cremated, then they wait and have some kind of a service or a celebration of life later. And that's the beauty of cremation. And so if someone dies and the weather's nice this year, but you know, normal, normal winter here, 35 below in January, and you say, you know, what we told July, we'll have a family reunion, <laughs> we could have something at the lake. Uh, I've done that, uh, you know, beautiful in the garden, they, put mom in the garden or whatever. So just know that that's a nice option. Um, the, what you gals have raised here, though, I want to point out something. There's a lot of cremation um, companies, I'll call them. And so uh, the thing that, that really makes us different is, is our your loved one never leaves our care. Our crematory is in South Rapids. So if, you love, if you're in the area and your loved one dies and you wish cremation, we do it right here, and they never leave our care, and you can come and pick them up. Let's be honest, there's other companies that aren't in our area, and that's where all you get is cremation, and then here you go, and that's where your faith community is coming in to have this ritual and do all that. Just so you know that that's out there, um, I just want to be honest about it, not disparage anyone, but there's lots of options, just like everything, of bare bones, and this is what you get. Now you guys go do it, or you come to us and we can help with all that, and we'll work with you. Question. Uh, well, more of a comment and maybe you can answer that question too. Um, my folks really did a good job pre planning everything. That also included pre payment. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's very good. So, cost wise, yep. what are we talking about? Yes. Um, do, can you give us some sure. ideas? Like, here's the deluxe package. Yep. Yeah. 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 But, yes, don't give it a party. No. <laughs> Stop it. <being. laughs> Especially this week under the flashing blue light. You know. Yeah, the drive through drive through yeah. They'll probably come to that. So, in fact, they're in, in, I could, it's, not, it's kind of funny, but they do have that in some big cities and it's just cremation. You drive through and pick up the ad. Yeah, it's, anyway, thanks for bringing it up. Uh, uh, that's why we encourage. Uh, Pre-planning is you can prepay for your funeral. And it does a couple things. One, then it takes the burden off the children, so then they're not left with the cost. And then you specify that. You say, guys, I, I'm going to give you the best gift ever. Your father and I, we're taking care of everything, and now we're going to start living. Don't worry about a thing. It's all done. Because we have these families that come in. Well, I don't know. They never, how do we pay for this? What does mom want? Well, well then you know what we're going to do. It's, we're going to go, it's just, so, thank you. So, you come into us, you pre-plan that, and pre-pay it, which means you pay ahead, we give you the estimate of, you tell us what you want, the deluxe package, by the way, the sky's the limit. So, I mean, I mean, serious people, you know, some people have come in and said, I, yeah, I want the, you know, the most elaborate custom-made casket you have, I want, you know, prime, I mean, and if you have the resources, fine. Others, it's what I want. So once you specify what it is, then you can pay for that at that time. It goes into a, a irrevocable account annuity. We're the beneficiary. It earns interest. Done. Done deal. Okay, kids say thanks. We're good. Thanks for bringing that up. And that's again why we say that. Do it now, not wait. And 
And just to share, my parents also planned everything perfectly, right down to the number of verses we ought to do on how great thou art. Yes. <laughs> yes. Everything, everything. Yes. But um, they had prepaid in their home county, and then my dad dies here. But we learned in the process that um, we worked with Daniels at that time. They were able to work with the funeral yes. home where my parents had prepaid, yep. prepaid and the money just yeah. worked out. It's transferable. It's transferable. All funeral homes have that arrangement. So and we did not know that. So yeah. we had like 10 minutes of now what? Yeah, it's just reassign that yeah. policy to the other funeral homes. That's a good thing to know that. And we all are collaborating with other funeral homes. Um, we call, you know, a funeral home from Bismarck will call us and, you know, we're bringing some of you or come out and pick them up. We all do that. It's all transferable. We're all collaborative. But those are, those are the important things. Um, I guess the other thing that you don't think about, but if you're a snowbird or you're yep. away and, and die away from home, yep. do you have policies or do you recommend policies for bringing the body back? Well, there's a cost to transport, and we'll work with the funeral home down there. Um, you know, we wouldn't drive down there, but if the death is in Florida, and then um, you just work with that funeral home, and they'll call us. If your policy is with us, if you have a range of side, they call us and say, you know, we're going to send so and so up to you and to finish that up. And we're all in talking with other funeral homes about that. The other vehicle you can use is a life policy from your life insurance agent. They can help you do that as well. So you can, you know, buy twenty thousand dollars worth of life insurance, specifying it for funeral expenses, and then designate us or your funeral home as the beneficiary. So, Looks like we're running out of time. Yeah, well, yeah. I just think James is. Oh, yes. I'll just say this and then you can answer your question, okay? okay? James has started a wonderful conversation yeah. and he can always come back. We'll be yeah. Obviously, there's a lot of interest. A lot of follow up. And, and you know, we're comfortable and we started asking great questions and that is wonderful. So we can finish up after one yes. more question. Okay, okay. well, and I'll say I'll leave you around if you want to come up yeah. individually. I respect your time and.